All right, well, welcome back. We're going to be looking at our next lesson, which is on the betrayal of Jesus. So we looked at the Last Supper last week, and now we're going to look at the betrayal. So our symbol for this week is the rooster. And the rooster starts crowing at the first light of dawn. You know, they don't stop until the sun goes down. In fact, it's one of the reasons in Champagne we're allowed to have up to six chickens in our yard, but we're not allowed to have any roosters because they're noisy. It's not just in the morning that they start crowing. It's all day long. They're annoying, loud, and persistent. Uh, when Peter heard the rooster crow, he was devastated to realize that he had fulfilled Jesus' grim prophecy of his denial. So we're going to look in our Spark Bibles this, today at uh, Luke chapter 22, verses 31 through 33, and verses 54 through 62. So we're going to see how Jesus spent years guiding, leading, and caring for his disciples, yet they betrayed and abandoned him in his moment of greatest need. When Jesus faced the humiliation of arrest, trial, and torture, his friends watched from the shadows denying that they ever knew him. Uh, in these stories, we can relate to the disciples when we think of times that we've betrayed our friends. Uh, we can also relate to Jesus because we have felt the sting of friends who have rejected or abandoned us. The question is, what happens then? What do we do when friends betray us? Uh, what do we do when we are tempted to abandon others? All right, I'm going to read to you from Luke chapter 22 verses 31 through 33, and verses 54 through 62. Simon, Simon, listen! Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail, and you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. And then later, they seized Jesus and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man was also with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And at that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. Peter was in Jesus' inner circle, right? I mean, there's the 12 disciples that travel around together, but a lot of the stories separate, you know, Peter and maybe a couple other disciples. Jesus shows him a number of things that he doesn't uh, show the other disciples. So when Jesus called together his closest disciples, Peter was always there. Peter was passionate about Jesus' ministry, wanting to protect Jesus from an uncertain future. Peter promised to walk alongside Jesus, even if it meant to prison or death. But Jesus knew Peter would betray him. And just as Jesus predicted, Peter denied his association with Jesus three times before the rooster crowed. This text describes an intimate portrayal of the loneliness of that day. And if Peter wouldn't be faithful friend, who would? Jesus was all alone. Jesus predicts that Peter will deny him three times before the rooster crows. Peter is devastated to hear this, but when Jesus is taken away, Peter fulfills Jesus' prophecy and denies that he even knows Jesus. Not once, but three times. So for you, what was the most unexpected part of this story? Which lie seems the most painful to you out of the three lies that that Peter shared, um, which to you would be the most painful? Would you be able to forgive Peter if Peter had denied that he ever knew you? Would you have been able to forgive Peter? Do you think Jesus forgave Peter? Maybe we'll find out. So our next reading is from Mark chapter 8 verses 31 through 33. 
the disciples had big plans for Jesus, right? They didn't necessarily know Jesus' mission or plan, but they had their ideas of what it should look like. They had seen him heal people from diseases, deliver them from demons, and restore sight to the blind. When Jesus told them that he would suffer and die, Peter did not understand how this could possibly be right or true. The disciples may have recognized him as the Messiah, but they did not understand what this Messiah was all about. So when I read this next section, I want you to draw a little, little emojis that you think would fit next to the words for suffering, rejected, killed, and rise. So those four words, when you see those words in your Bible in this section, in this story, I want you to make little emojis next to those and what you think that emoji face would look like for each of those different situations, each of those different words. So a reading from Mark chapter 8, verses 31 through 33. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind on divine things, not on human things. Whoa. <laughs> Jesus calls Peter Satan. Jesus knew that he would suffer and die, and when he predicted his death, the disciples did not understand or like what he was talking about. This could not happen to the Messiah. This was not part of their plan. Jesus got angry at Peter for not understanding, saying that he is focusing on human things and not divine things. Have you ever done that? Have you ever focused on human things and not divine things? In what ways does the church focus on human things and not divine things. Peter uses, uh, is called Satan, right? So Jesus uses the word Satan, Satan, which means adversary, all right? So this is different than like the devil creature we kind of imagine that with red and horns and all that stuff. Anything that's against God's plan could be an adversary, could be Satan, right? So it's a little different than one person that we think of as the devil. When someone's called Satan or an adversary, they're going against the design of God, the will of God, all right? So um, what emoticons, I'm curious, did you draw next to those four words earlier? Suffering, rejected, killed, and rise. What would those little emo emotions, uh, emojis look like? How would you feel if you were there when Jesus taught the disciples these things? And how was Peter an opponent or an adversary to God? All right, so we've got our project. Um, hopefully you got this in the mail, our, our project on betrayal, where we're going to look at the symbol of the rooster. And what we needed to do was kind of cut out these different sections. There was one that was like a little journal entry, and it said um, to write your answers to some of these questions. So there's some pretty personal questions about whether you had been abandoned by someone, whether you had been felt rejected, whether you've rejected other people. And then we rolled that up into a tube, and then we cut out the little rooster in a little circle and put it on top. And then you should have a little string that goes all the way through with a paper clip tied on top. So I've got mine here with my little paper clip on top. And then it says to get like a wet paper towel and um, hold the string with the wet paper towel and just kind of tug, um, see it says tug around the string uh, a few times, a few small tugs and see if you can hear the rooster crow. So let's try that. So my rooster sounds a little sick. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what your rooster sounds like, but maybe... Maybe you're able to get a, a little bit more of a rooster sound. I mean, it's definitely like a, a almost almost sounds like a chicken, maybe. Uh, there we go. So give yours a try and um, use this to remember. Maybe tug on it three times to remember those three times that the rooster crowed and that Peter realized that he had denied Jesus. So there's our little rooster project. Hopefully you've had some time. If you haven't, you can always work on this later today. And put that project together and as a reminder of our lesson today. So again, the rooster signals um, that Peter had denied Jesus three times. This pre prediction that Jesus made came true. Judas and Peter were singled out as betrayers, right? But almost all of the disciples fled from Jesus. It wasn't just these two that turned their backs on Jesus. All of them fled and hid uh, when Jesus was arrested. Jesus was betrayed by his closest friends, and yet Jesus didn't give up on them completely. 
So in this project, we, we get to create this kind of rooster that crows. And remember that three times. Remember that number because later we're going to see Jesus meet Peter again. And he's going to be doing something three times. Um, so why are friends so important? Uh, why is it important to have friends? How do you know if a friend is loyal? What sorts of things would help you to see that a friend is loyal and will be with you no matter what? Um, do you have friends like that? Hopefully. Hopefully you have really close friends like that. Um, what are ways that uh, friends betray one another? Maybe talking behind each other's backs. Um, maybe you, maybe they just quit hanging out with you. Um, you know, Peter was embarrassed to tell people that he was friends with Jesus. Maybe sometimes um, you're around a different group of people and you're embarrassed to say that you're friends with one of your friends because they don't think that person is cool. That's a form of betrayal and turning your back on your friends. Jesus told people to treat others in the way that you would want to be treated. Um, how does this relate to friendship and, and the golden rule? Think about that. The golden rule. Treat others as you would want to be treated. Uh, do you think Jesus was able to forgive all of the disciples? Um, Jesus calls us to forgive everyone and even to love our enemies. So why is that so hard sometimes? Let's take a look at another passage here from Mark chapter 14, verses 43 through 50. Um, you know, we talk about how betrayal is always personal. It hurts. Enemies can't betray us, right? Enemies can't betray us. Only friends can do that. So this, this betrayal, this is, this is a deep hurt because it comes from someone close to us. That's what made Judas's act uh, in this passage that we're going to read so painful for Jesus. Judas was one of Jesus' 12 closest friends. And despite the pain of betrayal, the most remarkable aspect of this passage is that Jesus accepted Judas's act and did not fight it. Jesus chose humility and submitted his life to be controlled by his betrayer. God of the universe in flesh in Christ submits to the desires of the, the friends around him. So we're going to read Mark chapter 14 verses 43 through 50. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. And with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were abandoned? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted him and fled. And later in this passage, uh, you can read on in this passage and find out that Jesus actually heals the ear of the slave of the high priest um, and tells them to put their swords away. So Judas is one of Jesus' 12 disciples, and yet in the end he betrayed Jesus to the authorities. And I know that seems weird that Judas would come up and kiss Jesus, but remember this was a sign of friendship. You know, in, in European countries and other places, sometimes you'll see friends greet each other with a kiss on each cheek, right? So my wife, uh, her family is from Italy, and when I first met all of her aunts and her grandmother, who still, you know, speaks Italian and is full-blooded Italian, they would greet me at these family gatherings with a kiss, you know, and, and then big hugs, right? So this, this would have been a normal greeting, but it was kind of a secret code that Judas had told, all you know, this army and all of these um, people with clubs and the priests and the scribes ahead of time. He said, okay, the one that I'm going to kiss, that's the one that you need to arrest. So there's like levels of deception going on here, right? So uh, in that passage, I want you to go back and draw a dotted circle around the words Judas and around the words betrayer in verse 50. And then write a time on a piece of paper that you were betrayed, right? We did that with our project. Um, you know how, And you wrote down maybe how that made you feel. How do you think Jesus felt that night? Uh, do you think Judas cared for Jesus at all? Why or why not? If you were one of the disciples, what would you have done? Would you have tried to defend Jesus and fight Judas and, and the rest of this crowd off? Or would you have been afraid that you would have get arrested as well? So lots of things to think about. This one's a, a deep and kind of sad part of the story. But as followers of Jesus, we have to remember that every time that we sin, 
we turn our backs on God. Every time we do something um, that hurts someone else or ourselves, we are uh, we are betraying Jesus, right? We're we're hiding and we're blaming and we're doing things that don't keep us in right relationship with Jesus Christ. So know that we can go to Christ and ask for forgiveness. Know that we can go to God and ask for forgiveness. Know that we can go to our friends and ask for forgiveness when they betray us uh, or when we betray them. So I want us to think about a blessing. If you've got that glass of water nearby, feel free to dip your finger in that glass of water and uh, be reminded of our lesson last week that we are fed. Be reminded in this story that eventually we will find forgiveness. Jesus will forgive them. So uh, dip your hand in that water, make the sign of the cross on your forehead and say, I am fed and forgiven. I am fed and forgiven. And then receive this prayer. Lord God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us now by your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. But in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessings on your day. God's peace.